Anyway, let's do something. Let's watch. Greetings from Germany. When we think about alien civilizations, we tend to look into the vastness of space to faraway places. Man, that song in the background. That sounds like um, Ludovic. Ludo, Ludovic. My brain isn't working very well. Einaudi. What's his name? Ludovico. Ludovico? Einaudi? Beautiful piano music. Planets. But there is another incredibly vast dimension that we might be giving too little thought to. Time. Could it be that over the last hundreds of millions of years, other civilizations existed on Earth? Indigenous technological... Just to insert something here, time is something not discussed enough in physics. It's something we don't understand, and not many people realize we don't understand it. And they'll think of, you know, the arrow of time, entropy. But the truth is, fundamentally, we don't know what time is. Quantum theory, general relativity, the two big pillars of physics, they, they say different things about what time is. That's something we need to solve quickly. <laughs> that would help us a lot. ...species that rose and died out, and that they or their artifacts are buried beneath our feet. What does science have to say about this, and what are the implications for us? Life on Earth has existed for 4 billion years, mostly as single-celled organisms, until some 540 million years ago, the Cambrian explosion heralded the age of animals. A huge time window for our indigenous aliens. Where if you've never looked into the Cambrian explosion, it is so freaking cool. And it they all mostly died, all the creatures from that time. Uh, or, or was it the creatures before? I think they were. There was a mass extinction. And a lot of them died. And that's why so, so many of them are so well preserved in that time period. You know, because the fossil record is messy. We're missing things. Not everything is able to be preserved, right? But that, from the Cambrian explosion, there was some event that fossilized them. And we can, we have, you know, lots of them. So, it's such a cool thing to look into, guys. Highly recommend. Where would we look for them? And what could we hope to find? Sadly, we have only one civilization to look at ourselves. Anatomically modern humans emerged around 300,000 years ago and probably lived in small groups of hunter-gatherers slowly spreading around the world. Progress was slow and our life... It's also to remember though, there were other species of human, right? Now on this planet, we are all the same species. Homo sapiens. But, uh, well, yeah, uh, there were actually other, you know, types of human. There were, you know, the Neanderthals, and we all have some Neanderthal in us. Some more than others. <laughs> Lifestyle didn't change much, although there may have been local bursts of complexity. Until about 10,000 years ago, when the agricultural revolution changed our lifestyle forever, enabling massive population growth and technological progress. Rather than just animals with culture and tools that would have been invisible from space, we changed the face of the planet, cleared forests and constructed cities and temples for our gods at breathtaking speeds and scales. Until, about 300 years ago, we became an industrial species, and yet again our numbers grew exponentially, as did our impact on the planet. We could say that our 300,000 year long history has three phases. We were hunter-gatherers for 97%, farmers for 2.9%, and industrialists for 0.1% of our history. I just watched a video on YouTube last night about where was the middle of humans. And they did the calculations. It's really interesting because, um, you know, there's been roughly 117 billion humans to ever live. That number is not going to be accurate about that, give or take. Who knows how many? And they try to find when was the 50th billion human born, right? And it's really counterintuitive. When do you think, chat? Like, take a guess. Well, you know, you might think because, you know, after the Industrial Revolution, population exploded so there would be heaps of humans you know maybe maybe a couple hundred years ago you might guess that was when the you know the middle of humanity right that seems intuitive however the 50 right in the middle of those 117 billion they said it was like about 2000 years ago i'm pretty sure isn't that crazy so that means half of all humans missed out on the last 2000 years of history like, think about that. All the things that have happened in the last 2,000 years. All the important things. <laughs> like, like so much important stuff happened in the last 2,000 years. Half of every human that has ever lived 
lived before then. It might not be 2000 years ago. It might have actually been uh, further back. I can't remember if it was 2000 BCE, right? Even further back before like most civilizations. And it's just wild to think that most humans lived then. And like they were just like roaming around doing nothing, right? And yet we are super new on Earth. On geological timescales, even the sturdiest things lose their durability. The oldest large-scale surface is the Negev Desert, a meager 1.8 million years old. Everything older has been crushed to dust or turned over, and it's either below the ground or covered by ice or ocean. Our age, the Anthropocene, will be a layer only a few centimeters thick in a few million years. If there were aliens before us, and they too went through these three phases, what would remain of them? What can we learn about indigenous aliens by looking at ourselves? Hunter-gatherer aliens. We actually know that in the last few million years there were hunter-gatherer aliens. Our ancestors, like Homo erectus, and cousins like the Neanderthals or Denisovans, and probably many more that we haven't found yet, or are lost to time forever. They left fragments of their bodies, of weapons and tools, and even art. Considering how long they existed and how little remains of them, although they lived not that far from our present, it's easy to think there have been others. Intelligent animals like us, that could talk and use tools and fire, that had culture and art. For the last two million years, most hominins lived as hunter-gatherers. So if these aliens never moved up higher on the tech tree, hundreds of different species and cultures could have existed without leaving any traces. Their artifacts lost to biological and then geological processes. At worst, they would leave absolutely nothing to be found after thousands of years. But what about fossils? We talked about how unlikely the process of fossilization is in more detail in our dinosaur video. But in a nutshell, per 100,000 years of Earth's history, we only get a handful of good fossils. Wow, that's a very interesting uh, fact. So we might easily just miss fossils of such people, but even if we had any, we wouldn't necessarily be able to identify them as hunter-gatherers. Agricultural and Empire Aliens Looking at humans again, agricultural societies left much more to be dug up and found because they used more sophisticated tools made from sturdier materials and had to feed millions, leaving many more artifacts. Farming allowed them to specialize and develop tech from writing to navigation, architecture, and government. So just to insert a little bit of uh, stuff here um, before we continue, it is totally possible, in my opinion, that there were things well before us, long time ago, that uh, did have intelligence. Um, and even it's possible that, you know, we were visited by, dare I say it, <laughs> aliens once upon a time, and we would never know. You got to remember, <laughs> life has been on Earth for four billion years. Earth has been around for about four and a half billion years, right? And you know what? He's saying humans evolved about 300,000 years ago. So before then, that's a hell of a lot of a time, right? A lot of time <laughs> before humans were around. And so, yeah, something had to come two billion years ago. There really is kind of no way for us to know unless they left something. And if that idea sounds interesting to you, you should go read the book, 2001, A Space Odyssey, or the movie. It's all about that. It has to do with the monoliths, what they are. It has to do with our evolution. It's really, really fun. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of ideas in actual science about this sort of thing as well, called, uh, you know, like panspermia, where, you know, life doesn't start on, you know, on Earth. It starts on another planet. Uh, and there's natural panspermia, where, you know, it flies over via asteroid or something. Then there's also, like, artificial panspermia, where, you know, life is kind of planted by some some super advanced species, right? You ever seen the movie Prometheus? That's what it's all about. The engineers in Prometheus planted humans on Earth, right? So it's it's definitely amazing to think about. And these things really are possible. And too many people don't. They just throw it in the bin as rubbish. It's like, this stuff is possible, guys. Over thousands of years, city-states became kingdoms and empires, some existing for millennia before they fell. Many of the buildings or monuments they constructed are still around, and traces of them will exist for a few thousand more years. Some only as outlines in the ground, but still recognizable to future archaeologists. 
The pyramids are piles of limestone so massive that they will probably be around for hundreds of thousands of years. And because... That's still not very long, right? <laughs> Compared to 4 billion. If you don't know, I'm creating a new kind of VPN. Uh, like, it literally isn't available to you guys on the internet. This is the first one that's public, publicly available. It's called a post-quantum VPN. And uh, you might have seen that NATO tested a post-quantum VPN earlier this year, provided by a, a private company who are only, they're B2B, so business to business. You can't actually use it unless you're a big business. And so they tested it like in March earlier this year. So this stuff is brand new, okay? And this, we're like the first one to make it available to customers, on, you know, just publicly, it's called B2C. And so here it is. Uh, we're releasing the beta this week. We've got the alpha out on the internet. You can use it for free right now, the alpha. The alpha doesn't look like this. This is the beta version. And this version has 11 servers. They're much faster than the alpha. And you get a free month when you sign up for the beta. So yeah, that's coming later this week. Just wanted to mention it. You should come get it. It's got post-quantum algorithms in it that can literally protect you from quantum computers. Why is that important? You should do your homework. <laughs> of the greater numbers of humans that lived during our farm and empire period, we can expect way more fossils and artifacts to be detectable, maybe for a few million years before they vanish. So we can say with confidence that no such indigenous alien civilization existed in the last few million years, because otherwise we would have found something that they left. This... Maybe they're, you know, they're... <laughs> maybe they're not like us and they don't like to uh, leave an imprint, right? <laughs> still leaves a window of hundreds of millions of years back to the emergence of complex life where we wouldn't be able to tell. If there were alien pre-industrial societies and empires on the level of the ancient Romans or Chinese, they would have likely disappeared without a trace. Their tools, even advanced metals, would have rotted away. If they dug up canals, cleared forests and built cities, their traces would be very hard to distinguish from nature. Maybe there was once an empire of cephalopods occupying impressive cities in swamps and lakes made from wood and stone. Yeah, guys, everything will eventually deteriorate. Um, you know, everything will just be recycled <laughs> in terms of the energy contents. And uh, nothing is going to last forever, it seems like, right? Except for maybe photons <laughs> and other massless things. Maybe the quantum fields, right? But um, let's keep going. <laughs> their engineers flooding land to build wet cities, their poets reciting poems in a language of colors. Maybe they never industrialized. Maybe their society was too stable or not inventive enough, or they never got a chance. A single event like an asteroid, an epidemic. Could you imagine how crazy it would be if we just like somehow figured out or found out that there was actually like, you know, like four different eras of intelligence that has arisen on our planet. Could you imagine? that's possible you can imagine how much that would change our outlook on ourselves on the universe and people really are like ah oh, no that's that's great it's not it's really not <laughs> like uh, that's what i was saying i was going to say nothing lasts forever because of something called uh entropy my boys and girls demic or an ice age could just have deleted their civilization ground up their temples as their soft bodies rotted away Sadly, we don't have the tiniest amount of evidence for any such civilization. After a few million years at best, their achievements would have dissolved into nothing. Industrial indigenous aliens. What about industrial civilizations like humanity today? Imagine humans died out suddenly through a pandemic or cosmic rays or something like that. What would remain? Our impact on the planet is orders of magnitude greater than that of our ancestors. The fossil record will show a great extinction of wildlife and an explosion of fossils from... Huge extinction. We talked about this yesterday. 69% of the population of most animals on Earth has disappeared <laughs> because of us since 1970. Human-associated animals like rats... Can it's not funny. I'm laughing because I'm crying on the inside. <laughs> cows, pigs and chickens. Like the structures of our ancestors, skyscrapers and streets and hard drives will basically crumble into nothingness in a few millennia. But because there were so many humans everywhere, for a few million years after our sudden end, there would be clear hints of our existence. The byproducts of our industrial lifestyle might actually give us away for some hundreds of millions of years. Again, 
not that long. <laughs> you know, the, the sun before it goes into a red giant and kind of maybe even swallows the earth. You know, it's got another, what, four and a half, four billion years. Um, so, you know, there'll be, uh, if we disappear relatively soonly, which looks like we might, yeah. Aliens could come in two billion years, not to find anything. <laughs> we use massive amounts of artificial fertilizer, which redirects Earth's flow of nitrogen that is being deposited in the soil. They might be smart enough, though, to look at certain things like the contents of the atmosphere. They might be a, they might be able to find traces of things that can only be created um, in an artificial way, if you get what I mean. I, I'm not necessarily meaning the things we leave behind, but the things we... Um, change accidentally there could be things i don't know you'd have to really think about that you'd probably be best off to leave we'd probably best off to leave something on the moon um like a monolith <laughs> if you want to read a short story to do this sort of thing which is really amazing go read the star by arthur c clark it's a beautiful short story you can find it on youtube it's only like 10 minutes or something right and it's really incredible so you should go check it out i just love the idea of that it's tragic but you know that quote by Stephen Hawking, life would be tragic if it weren't funny. And you know, the guys asking me the last couple of days, how do you get past like existential crises with, with that sort of thinking? Humor. Life would be tragic if it weren't funny. And that, that relates to that other quote that I love. Uh, li life might be a shipwreck, but we must remember to sing in the, in the lifeboats. <laughs> I've always loved that one as well. Mining metals and rare earth elements leaves long-term scars and depletes natural resources. We saturate our oceans with plastics that find their way to the ocean floor and may persist for hundreds of millions of years. There are radioactive elements and their decay, unnatural accumulations of elements that don't exist outside labs or weapons. And of course, in our short industrial history, we have changed the proportion of CO2 in the air by burning massive amounts of fossil fuels, increasing the acidity of the oceans, and so on. We may already have left a mark in the geological record. So far, we have found no traces of an industrial alien civilization. No layers of weird chemicals or displaced elements. No radioactive layer to indicate that once great nations waged nuclear war. We do see mass extinctions and massive shifts in the fossil records, but no evidence that they did not occur naturally. And, ironically, we've hit upon an interesting problem here. If industrial societies stress the ecosystem enough to cause their own extinction, they won't be around that long. But if they become sustainable, their imprint on the geological record may be tiny. If past industrial civilizations were sustainable before they died out, we may have little to no chance of ever knowing about them. In any case, over hundreds of millions of years, these signatures may become very subtle and get overlooked or interpreted as natural. Even if an industrialized alien society existed 200 million years ago... Love the little pyramids there. <laughs> nice. ...and lasted for 100... As in, like, you know, alien stuff, alien tech. ...thousand years... I don't think that, I just think it's funny. ...300 times longer than industrial humanity, it still might be easy to miss it in the geological record. In any case, all of this is speculation. In the end, we should... That's a great idea, Snow. We should create an internal meme. <laughs> We kind of have. Look what Elon did with, um, you know, chucking the car out into space, right? You know, the car that's <laughs> orbiting around the sun now. And on it, somewhere in the car, they left this little chip and on it, it says, made by humans. <laughs> and he also put that memory device in there and stored on the memory device is his favorite book series, Foundation. If you've never read those books by Isaac Asimov. It's also about the same stuff as what I was just saying, the star, but I like the star better than foundation. It's about leaving, you know, a monument <laughs> of our species, but it's a little bit different. They leave it deliberately because they, to, to help uh, their species get back up to speed, right? After it's destroyed. And I'm saying that because that thing will be out there floating for quite a while, right? Because it's in a vacuum, so. We shouldn't use our imagination to trick ourselves into thinking we know anything about our blind spots. Just assuming a thing happened because we don't have evidence against it is a trap we should avoid. So it's also a trap if you never, you know, speculate or think about things just because there's no evidence, you know. For now, if we look at the vastness of time, it seems as devoid of aliens as the vastness of space. 
Maybe we are alone in this universe and always were. Maybe we'll find traces of others eventually, we don't know. But there is one important takeaway. The continuation of our civilization is not guaranteed. And if we're not careful, we may disappear forever. Let's hope that in a few million years, there isn't another civilization studying our layer in the fossil record. Another great video, NordVPN. Get out of here. That should be CalVPN. Last thing to finish this video, I just wanted to say, what do you guys think would be like the best eternal meme? Like, what could we do that would be funny and it would just withstand the test of time to some degree? I, I feel like there's stuff we could do that would be really funny. <laughs> like the star. I kind of want to write a short story now, right? But it's the star that I was just telling you about. But instead of leaving like a monument of how like we were here, it's just like, you know, like you guys like <laughs> like something funny right that would be crack up but anyway maybe we should uh end it that video there uh checker